So Gilbert Keith Chesterton. Now you can understand why he went by GK. No offense. Gilbert GK. Keith wrote a whole lot of literature. Yeah. A whole lot of literature. Yeah. Like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of essays. Hey, I'm Jordan Burke. And I'm Kristen Priola. And this is Saints and Sages. Where we talk about the wisdom of the saints and how it's relevant for you. Real quick, before we start the show, we got a few things to promote. If you are Smarty Pants, or if you want to be a Smarty Pants, what? like today's sage, G.K. <laughs> Chesterton, just saying, one of the things you can do to become Smarty Pants, particularly in theology, prayer, spirituality, all those great things, avala-institute.org. So if you're like, man, I really like G.K. Chesterton, I would really like to be on his level of intelligence, this might help you. Also known as being educated or well-versed, you know, spiritually equipped, those kind of words, not just smarty pants. AKA if you're interested in any of that pants. live, online, interactive type schooling, with, the Avila Institute's for you. With some of the top teachers in their fields. Absolutely. Father professors. Dwight Longenecker is one of our professors. Come on. Dr. Well, Elizabeth Mitchell on oh, St. Edith Stein. Come on. Paul McCusker. Dr. David Arias. The, if, if you don't, All kinds. I, these are rock stars Amazing in humans. this world. So if you're not like, whoa, I want to take a class. And it's live. You said it live online. So if you want to interact with them, that's you're the way to do it. You're going to be blown away. Avala-institute.org. Other thing we want to promote. This Present Paradise by author Claire Dwyer, close uh, friend of ours and co-worker. Go buy this book. Uh, if you don't, I don't know what to tell you, but we're no longer friends. So go <laughs> It'll buy change your life. So it's worth it. Worth a buy. Sophia institute or spiritual direction.com forward slash slash shop and then the last thing and i'll stop babbling i'll let you babble now how's that sound well i just wanted to say one more thing about this present paradise oh it's very fitting for our show because it's all about saint elizabeth of the trinity mm. and her life and teachings and beautifully wrote by claire so i just wanted to say why that. is this fitting for the show because we're all about the saints okay oh <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Jordan. So yeah, there's also a silent retreat, which yeah. we'd love to invite you to on February 20th, 2021. Be there if you're ages 18 to 35 at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament. I feel like an infomercial. It's totally fine. But seriously, we'd love to have you all. It's a silent retreat based on spiritual warfare and discernment of spirits. And if you just need some time to get away from everything, whether it's school or I don't know, just life in general, come on to the shrine and join us for an incredible event that's going to change your life because you're going to encounter Jesus, not only in the sacraments, but also through some, a couple talks. Um, Dan and Stephanie will be there. We'll be there. We'd love to meet you and on a lot of young adults across the world. So yeah, join we, us. It's, it's going to be a uh, great Holy Spirit filled experience. Now all of that out of the way. All that rambling, bambling, rumbling, grumbling out of the way. We're going to move forward. I wasn't grumbling, but okay. I was. maybe a little uh with our second official sage a sage a sage we are saints and sages and the second sage as i said before is gk Ch chesterton it would help if i could say his name i would like to preface as well because we're talking about someone from england that this sage in particular is really well known and i have no idea how i actually ended up doing that i was not playing that at all but anyway so yeah like i just want to say this also we haven't done a sage in a while and sages are just wise people who have not been declared saints, but who have practiced Catholicism, really holy, wise people. Or kind of who have or contributed Christian. deeply to faith, spirituality, and understanding. Yes. So G.K. Chesterton philosophers. has written like orthodoxy, all these other things. He's contributed to uh, our understanding of the faith. So it's not necessarily that these people are ever going to become saints. It's not what we're claiming at all. It's just declared. They might be saints. They Yeah, sure. It's just a, hey, this was a person that's worth looking into uh, who was a solid, we try to keep them all Catholic because this is a Catholic show. Um, and so here we are. Now, G.K. Chesterton's life is so expansive. And just like what we did with C.S. Lewis, we're going to take, and we'll go back to C.S. Lewis at some point, we're going to take portions of the life, portions of their works and relay that um, so you have a broader understanding of who this person was. For this show, we're going to be talking specifically about the innocence of Father Brown. However, we do want to give you a background into GK if you are unfamiliar with who he is. So Gilbert Keith Chesterton. Now you can understand why he went by GK. No offense. Gilbert GK. Keith wrote a whole lot of literature. Yeah. A whole lot of literature. Yeah. Like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of essays 4000 new news over 4000 newspaper articles 4 
thousand newspaper articles. So basically like writing pretty much every single day for a total of 11 years. So that's how many articles he wrote on top of the narratives and books and all of the things that he wrote. But he grew up at Church of England, in fact, um, born in London, England in on May 29th, 1874. And he went to school to become educated in college. But then he dropped out. and He was like, I'm going to art school. And so he went to the Slade School and literature at and studied literature at University College London. He got married to Francis. And in 1922, he actually left Canterbury to go to Rome. And he was intrigued by the Catholic faith. And so he asserted, he said this, he dared to go down. Okay, wait, wait. The only church that dared to go down with me into the depths of myself. And mm. he was talking about the Catholic church. Mm. And so he converted to Catholicism. And a lot of people were shocked. A lot of Protestants were like, what? And they were really frightened. But he knew, he said this, in fact, another quote, much too frightened of that tremendous reality on the altar. Um, was originally why he was hesitant, but then he he did convert through, and you mentioned this, there was a priest yeah. who encouraged him. Yep, and I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute when we talk more about Father Brown. But as many of you know, or you may not know, he was buddies with uh, C.S. Lewis, and he tried to convert C.S. Lewis. <laughs> and he actually had a huge influence on C.S. Lewis going from um, you know, almost believing nothing to Christianity. And uh, he was also, now you were just talking about this. I didn't know this, but he was a member of the Inklings. Is that what it was he called? He was not a member of the Inklings, but he was friends with a lot of them. Okay. So the Inklings was Lewis, Tolkien, and a bunch of other folks. Yeah. Okay. But they all, the they all knew each other, basically. Unless I'm wrong. So y'all fact check me, but I didn't see that he Either was way. one of them per se. Interesting But he fact. was friends with a lot of them. So it, he pretty much wrote everything from poetry. Yep on politics to theology and philosophy i mean the man was tying pretty much every facet of our world together in his writings he was really 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 prolific yeah you had something I i didn't mean to cut you off no i don't even remember what i was gonna say so that works out perfectly you want to get into uh uh well you have some more notes here i think would be pertinent talking about his writings in in 1910 because this was around the time he wrote the innocence of father brown yeah, well, it seemed that he was really articulate about everything. It seemed like he wrote on every subject known to man. At least a lot of critics have said that the man just knew a lot about a lot of things. And so kind of a jack of all trades when it came to his writing. But there were three primary sections which he focused on, which was social criticism. And you can see that a lot in the, all of his volumes of journalism, um, but specifically gathered in The Defendant, 12 Types and Heretics. And he expressed a lot of specific views, strong views, which we'll get into. And his second preoccupation was literary criticism. So he had articles on that and books on that. And then thirdly, theology and religious argument. So those are the primary topics that he focused on. But really, though, I want to just say some of the the topics that he included, because it's fascinating how someone could write about so many different subjects, mindless fatism, rampant materialism, moral relativism, censorship by the press, and usually opposed by censor- censorship of the press, if I can even say that word. Um, the rise of the twin evils of big government and big business, the decline of the family, the loss of beauty in the arts, the loss of wonder at the world, and the loss of liberty in life. Wow. Wow is an understatement. The dude's brain was massive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just just to go into all those topics, to willingly go into those topics, and then be passionate about those topics, says a lot about who he was. Well, I just love that he took intellect to a whole nother level and creativity for the numbers. I mean, vast amounts of people have enjoyed and learned from G.K. Chesterton from a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was hanging out with kiddos and making them laugh and and striking up conversation and making jokes. Smoking a pipe. Smoking a pipe. But with also with the elderly and everybody in between with the Probably smoking a pipe with the elderly, not necessarily the kids. Mm, We don't know. Either way. It is England in the 1900s. You know, there's no telling. I did want to say this, that he was 6'2". And you can see pictures. um, 6'2", about 300 pounds. He's a big boy. he had a mustache. You know, he's smoking a pipe. Yep. Really interesting guy. Usually wear a hat. So anyway, he died in June 14th, 1936. But Jordan's going to go into kind of more of his specific writings that we wanted to focus in on. The today. Innocence of Father Brown. This is where I get to nerd out because I I love. Were you doing like the glasses thing? Let me <laughs> put my glasses. glasses up. Yeah, yeah let's see that. Let me put my glasses up. I love 
mystery stories. I love detective stories. When I was a police officer, I was slated for detectives while well, I was attempting to get a detective slot. Took the class, interview and interrogation. All of this is very inter- interesting and, and uh, integrated into who I am. I'm fascinated by the stuff, always have, have been. Sherlock Holmes, I've read all of them, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 times. Like, I love them. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I've read them over and over and over again. Endlessly fascinating. Someone get him a hat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, if you want to send me a hat, I'll probably wear it. <laughs> On the show. This, is this though, Innocence of Father Brown is like the Catholic version of Sherlock Holmes. And we'll kind of get into the differences and the similarities. But basically, just as a rundown of the story itself, it, it, well, I should say stories. The Innocence of Father Brown is a collection of short stories about this priest named Father Brown written in 1911. Now, around that time, Sherlock Holmes was very popular and there was a lot of other writers who were trying to kind of emulate that style and that storytelling and they were just falling flat left and right. But when... GK wrote this it was quoted as the miracle book of 1911 everybody loved it I mean they just latched right onto it and once you listen to it like like audible is one of the most fun ways I think to to partake in the story or if you read it it is really fun it's it's dark in times but as any good mystery I think is you know murder and intrigue and those sorts of things but it is there's a there's a really interesting goodness through all of it. And the main character, this father Brown has this beautiful way of solving these crimes and not for the sake of solving the crimes. It's almost like he just knows what happens and he's more concerned about the soul of the person who committed the crime than the actual, than anything else. And you may be thinking, well, that sounds kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy and it's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) An adventure. it's, It's totally worth listening to. So here's where it gets interesting, though. As a background, Father Brown is based on a lifelong friend of G.K. Chesterton. It's based on a real person. The the priest that we're talking about is Father John O'Connor, who actually helped. Which G- we mentioned earlier yep, during who, his conversion. Who helped G.K. Chesterton convert. So essentially, the story goes, G.K. Told, went to him and said he wanted to write about, quote, some sordid social questions of vice and crime. <laughs> and just adding to the repertoire of all his other writings, right? Why not? And Father O'Connor said, I think you're going in the wrong direction. Let me tell you some stories. And so he begins to talk to him about things, not breaking the seal of confession at all, but like, hey, this is a a way that this crime was committed that was described to me. And GK was just shocked. And there's another story that I'm probably going to butcher later on, but they were at a college (laughs) and and, uh, these two students were, they were all kind of talking with these students and the students were essentially blown away by the intelligence of, of, uh, of, of John O'Con- Father O'Connor. Oh, the priest. And, but they made a comment, something about like, oh, he's just this lowly, like he doesn't really know. And whatever they said was was kind of demeaning to the, about the priest. And it was written that GK almost laughed out loud because he's like, you have no clue what you're talking about. Like Ooh. this this guy knows more about real life than, than you guys do. You're wow. educated kids, right? So he writes these short stories. And I love, so there's, there's twists and turns And all of them, as any good detective mystery is. However, how do I explain this? Father Brown, not only... I'm having trouble putting it into words. He's not just brilliant, he's kind. So like with Sherlock Holmes, it's really focused on Sherlock Holmes' intellect. Hmm. And and almost this otherworldly, like, how does he know these things? Like... Oh, I, I noticed the paint splotch on your left hand and that tells me that you're a writer and you do this, this and this. And, you know, half of your face is shaven not correctly, which means that there was a shadow and, you know, <laughs> and you, must have sha- to the conclusion, yeah, you must have shaved you at 3 a.m. And, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whereas Father Brown is like, there's this connect to the soul through every one of these stories. And so he has an intellect and he's able to tell like, oh, I could see where the hammer fell that murdered this guy. I can see the piece of cloth hanging from there. But there's so many twists that GK in- intertwines in- into these stories that it keeps you going forward. And the other thing that I really love about these stories is that, uh, hold on, I have to refer to my notes. Sorry, this can be edited out. <laughs> oh, this is no a- edits allowed. Yeah, no Must edits allowed. In. His primary goal wasn't to, he wasn't a cop, his goal wasn't to arrest the murderers his goal was to make them confess Mm. or if it was a thief 
Flambeau and Valentine are the de- Valentine, I believe, was the detective. Forgive me if I'm mixing them up. And Flambeau was like the the uh, the world renowned thief. And, you know, hmm. um, and one of the stories Flambeau, I believe it was, was stealing some silverware. And his goal, his entire goal was not, hey, where well, you're going to go to jail. It's you should confess. You should confess your sins. <laughs> so it's like this really interesting. There's no malice. There's no judgment. It's just like, you know, what's right. This is what's right. You need to confess your sins. And spoiler alert, if you haven't read the series, I'm not going to I'm not going to steal this from you. I, I have not read the series, Jordan. Well, spoiler alert, the main bad guy be, ends up converting essentially through these series of short stories and becomes essentially Father Brown's right-hand man. And it's just this fascinating journey cuz each story is different and has sometimes a different set of players. But maybe. they all connect somehow. But they with all Father connect Brown. somehow with mm. Father Brown, and like maybe uh, Flambeau is in one of them, and maybe he's in, the, maybe he's not in the second, but he's in the third and fourth, right? So there's this intertwined, this world that exists outside of all these stories. Uh, it's just, it's just so fascinating. And then um, I had something else I was gonna say. Man, I'm really struggling. Maybe two shows in a row is is, is weighing a little bit heavier <laughs> on me than I expected. But uh, yeah, anyway, I, I'm I'm ranting and raving at this point. I really, it's just hyper entertaining, um, all of these. And you can listen stories. to it as well. Yeah. Which is fascinating. And what's even more fascinating is, I just think, just kind of talking about G.K. Chesterton's ability to draw in a number of different types of people is he really did evangelize culture through imagination. I yeah, mean, it really he was his creativity his craftsmanship with yeah. words oh. that he had this ability to draw people to wonder about mm-hmm. God. And mm-hmm. he, he wanted people to know about the Catholic faith. And so he wrote about, he didn't write explicitly, this is Catholicism, but he wrote narratives like father Brown, the innocence of father Brown to display the Catholic church and teach about the Catholic church, which I think is so beautiful. Oh, it's the brilliant. Way he like morphs everything into Well, and you reminded me what beliefs. I was going to say. You're yeah. talking about how he's able to write. Every one of these short stories, so in Sherlock Holmes, it's very much about Sherlock Holmes and Watson, and then there's some players in there. But for Father Brown, every person in his stories come really truly comes to life. You can see the way that he writes and the way that you're trying to, you're describing, where it's like, oh, like this person has a story. They have a, when you read about the person in the short story who may not be integral to the story itself, they come alive. And one of the fascinating, to another thing you said, another great point was you you said he's not directly saying this is Catholicism, but he's still talking about the faith. The very first short story in, in uh, The Innocence of Father Brown, when everything is completed and he's talking to the thief and he says, this is, you know, I suspect you these different ways. He said, but the final thing that gave me away is you attacked, you attacked reason or something along those lines. <laughs> it was just this very, this very factual, like, no good Catholic priest attacks reason or so, something along the, you know, I'm, I'm probably butchering that, but it was just this, this brilliant example of a, a, an example of a truth without saying it's a truth. This it's, it's creating this world and the story around this particular thing to bring it to life and have it hammered into your mind. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I'm excited to get into more of his writings. I mean, like I mentioned or, earlier, orthodoxy is a very popular one, but you want to talk about a deep dive that would probably take uh, several weeks to prepare for. There are so many different routes we could take with G.K. Chesterton because his writings are so expansive and his just uncanny ability to bring intellect to wit and humor and just enjoyment on all things literary it's fascinating to me um his ability to write on such a range of subject matter but yeah i think this is an important thing for us to take away from this is possibly just recognizing not only the joy that gk chesterton had for all people and just in life and he could take something super simple like a piece of chalk and write about it and it was fascinating for many to read and i think that just encourages us as christians that Life is simple. Yep. We make it complex. Yep. It can be simply enjoyed with our creator. And we can bring about, you know, so much joy in life by just loving people in the moment and seeing for seeing things for what they are, accepting this is our reality and just 
being filled with that charity and that hope that G.K. Chesterton had. He defended so much truth just within his writings and his daily life within the Catholic Church and with in modern day or in in the culture of his time. And so I really just love the fact that this man, although not declared a saint, had so much to contribute um, to our Catholic faith. Yeah. And it's a great example, too, that you can do the same thing if you're a creative person, whether it's writing, whether it's art. I mean, our faith can be... um, if you are a person, yeah, you can be creative yeah. because our creator created us and he gave us the ability to see things with his perspective, which is a creative lens. Um, and so, yeah, you can definitely reflect on that on Lord. Like, how do you want to use me and where do you want me to um, share your joy and be charitable and compassionate towards others in the state of life that I am in and be creative? Yep. And- it's important. And if you have, yeah, yeah, no, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, you know, and I if you have time, you can read The Innocence of Father Brown and highly recommend. The open only open your mind to imagination. The only, if you're a parent listening, the only um, thing I would note is that there are, I think there's one or two instances of particular words being used in the book that, and it's like I said, one or two that were popular in that time that are certainly not popular now. Oh. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So just a parental <laughs> discretion warning there. Um, her story, it's like Mark Twain. I mean, we all are kind of familiar with some of that, but it's one or two in, in, uh, in this instance. That being said, we are going to come back to G.K. Chesterton. Yes, as let's Kristen talk ex- about him again. Yeah, as Kristen explained, his life is just too large to take in one episode in one setting. Um, so we will certainly come back. And if you have any recommendations that you'd like us to dive into in particular, please let us know. We have an email address. Sometimes we'll get emails. Uh, what is the email address? Saintspod at myavala.com. So if you have one of those email thingies, you can send us an email thingy and we will read it and we'll probably talk about it on air. So but, be nice. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Go read GK Chesterton and, and definitely um, experience more of your childlike wonder through yes. his imaginative lens. Yep. With that being said, we can't ask him to pray for us. We could. Uh, GK Chesterton. I don't know if that's canon. But. I don't know. Josh said it earlier. He said if, even though he might not be declared a saint, he could possibly be a saint. Okay. So what's the harm? I. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all fact check us. All right. You want to do it? I, I don't it makes know. me. It makes me uncomfortable. Bye. So, bye. Thanks for listening. <laughs>